In 2005, the Clay Counts Coalition began as a grassroots effort to address underage substance abuse in Clay County, Kansas. The Clay Center Police Chief, Bill Robinson, and Mayor Sharon Brown led a small but passionate group representing key sectors of our community in meetings to discuss the community's needs and interventions. The group chose Clay Counts as a name to emphasize the focus of the coalition, which was to ensure the health and wellness of all Clay County citizens. The group was organized as a branch of the Clay County Health Department and promoted through a series of town hall meetings. Then in 2007, through the support of the Kansas SPIF SIG grant, the Strategic Prevention Framework was utilized specifically to address the problem of underage drinking. Activities to address underage drinking were in full swing with the hiring of two project success counselors who championed the initiatives. Then in 2015, a Suicide Prevention Activities Program grant provided support to address the needs of students regarding depression and suicide. As a result of this funding, the team developed policies and suicide protocols, as well as various student interventions. When surveyed, coalition members state that they feel most proud of Clay Counts because of our ability to find creative solutions to our community's specific and very real needs. To accomplish this, our Clay Counts leadership team not only thoughtfully reviews our local data, but also attempts to listen to each of the community sectors to determine our next direction. Once this direction is determined, coalition members then effectively work together to implement activities and interventions that are genuinely tailored to our small town audience, seeking to do this in a way that every patron feels valued and heard. A great example of this is our Wildlink Group, which has increased the level of activity of community support in the coalition and our partnership with our schools. Throughout this process, Clay Count strives to find hidden supports and prevention gems in our community and feature them at meetings and student activities. Clay Count's leadership is most proud and grateful for the many essential prevention resources and services that have helped to create and support us here in North Central Kansas. Because of this, Clay Counts truly believes that we are working together to make Clay County a great place in which to live, learn, work, and play. Hello, my name is Lori Martin, and it's my joy to serve as the community mobilizer for the Clay Counts Coalition. Today, we're going to bring to you several individuals that have been key leaders in our coalition and our community as we've worked together to make Clay Center and Clay County better together. My first guest this morning is Dana Rickley. Dana serves as our director of our community health department, the Clay County mm -hmm. Health Department, but she also serves as the fiscal agent for the Clay Counts Coalition. So Dana, tell us a little bit about how long you've worked at the Clay County Health Department and how long you've been involved in the coalition. Okay, um, I've been at the Health Department since 1997 and I've been with the coalition since 2007. And we have always served as the fiscal agent. Okay, and as our fiscal agent, you're the girl in charge of the money. Yes. Yeah, and I think you've been a great steward for us. Can you talk to us about ways that you feel that uh, Clay Counts has demonstrated good stewardship and gotten a good bang for our buck out of those grant dollars? Well, one thing that I wanted to be very clear about was that the money that goes to the coalition does not pass through health department funds. It has its own line in the county budget and that was something that we were very intentional about so we could keep money separate and we would know how the money was being spent. Mm -hmm. So now, We've always been on kind of a tight budget. Yes. How do you feel that we've really stretched those funds to make a big impact in Clay County? Well, one good thing is we have a very supportive community and when we've gone to ask community members or businesses mm -hmm. how they could help they're always very willing to help with like providing our food providing venues providing goodie bags providing all those things that transportation grant, yeah. Yeah. yeah all those things that grant dollars won't let us buy and right. so our communities really pitched in haven't they yes we've even had insurance agents write liability insurance so we can 
use vehicles to go to special events such as the Mental Health Awareness Day at the Capitol. Our next guest today are two young women that are students here at Clay Center Community High School. Both of them are part of our leadership team for our youth leaders in Kansas. I have to my left Reagan McDonald and Izzy Blackwood. Tell us about your involvement in Y-Link and, and uh, why you're there and, and what you hope to accomplish. So I joined Y-Link at the beginning, uh, at the end of last school year because I saw the applications and I thought it would be a good idea. And then as I started to work through the summer, I was elected as the president. And it was at that point that I started to really kick things up a notch. Okay. And when I took over, especially with Izzy's help, we decided we wanted it to be more mental health focused and to become a safe place for our peers to go. In our school in the past, we've had a lot of problems with underage drinking and other illegal activities that can cause mental health issues. And so we decided that this should be something that kids can look forward to and have fun with that's not gonna harm them in any way. Okay. So we host fifth quarters and... Start with Izzy, you telling us about why you chose to join Wiley. Uh, so I first heard about Wylink because my friend was actually the president. I think Reese was the president. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so I heard about it. And when I had like heard about Wylink, I didn't know that it had a mental health focus. I just know about the drug and alcohol, um, anti-drug and alcohol coalition. And so I joined um, because I thought it was like a good activity and that it would look good on college applications. But then as I learned that they also focused on mental health, which is kind of my passion because I lost my oldest brother to suicide. And so I really want to advocate for mental health. Then that kind of grew my passion for Y-Link. And so my goal with Y-Link was to spread suicide awareness and um, advocate more for mental health, especially in teenagers. So that was kind of my, how I grew in Y-Link and what I wanted to do. So can you girls share with our audience about some of the things that we've done to uh, promote that positive mental health in our school? Yeah, we started out this fall with a lot of fifth quarter events, which takes place after football games. So it's the fifth quarter. And we did like flag football games and free food after the games. We've had movie nights. We also had a pancake party after one of the basketball games. Um, and we're planning a slip and slide kickball event for right before finals week, just to make sure that people have things to do and it's with all your friends. And our events have gone over very well this year. We, um, we handed out rubber band bracelets, black ones that say you are stronger than you know. Uh, all of our Y-Link shirts on the back say you're stronger yes. than you know. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of our mission statement. So we hang posters around. We've also ordered um, little green ribbons that are suicide awareness that we are going to do something with next school year. So we just want, we try a lot to raise awareness around the school, whether it be by bracelets or our shirts or posters. That's right. In fact, you girls are going to be going through suicide prevention training yep. this summer to form the Green Bandana Squad here at Clay Center Community High School, mm -hmm. as well as traveling to Dallas yes. to attend the CADCA conference. And so we can mm -hmm. continue to help spread the good word yes. uh, here within our own community. Izzy, tell us about your guest you brought along. So I have with me Rubix, and he is a golden retriever. He is a professional therapy dog in the school, and he is in a ninth grade ELA classroom. Uh, so professional therapy dogs are in the school to help reduce stress. Um, they can help kids if they have disabilities. Uh, they offer a lot of tasks like bracing, deep pressure therapy, retrieving. So Rubik's job throughout the day is really to um, reduce stress. Our next guest today on the Voices of Clay Counts is Renee Langvart. And Renee, we invited you to come in today because you serve as a good voice for the business sector of our community. Thanks and for having me. as a key leader in Clay County in that role, can you kind of share about some of the ways that you've been involved with Clay Counts and, and uh, maybe the impact that you've seen our group okay. make right. on the community? Okay. Um, so I think right off the bat, I was initially involved with Clay Counts because I designed the logo. Right, <laughs> uh, yeah. So it was my, my privilege and my pleasure to design the logo. Um, you know, sometimes a fresh logo just really gives a fresh perspective. And I think that it just did just that, Absolutely. you know. Absolutely. So, um, and then 
As far as my involvement on the business side, so I'm the manager of the Rex Theater, and uh, we've had the privilege of having a lot of the events that you have created and coordinated have actually been hosted at the at the Rex Theater. Right. Uh, the the first one I think was the, the drugs. if they had known night. If they yeah. had known, uh -huh. yeah, sorry, yeah. I couldn't think of what it was yeah. called. Um, and I still I was actually talking to somebody about that the other day. Really, and so. You know, I had never, on a personal level, I had never really thought about uh, the true dangers of mixing alcohol with a prescription drug. Right, yeah. You know, and so, like, a lot of times I think the focus is just done on underage drinking and underage, you know, like, or illegal drug use and all of that. Uh -huh. And for me, um, on a just me personally, watching that, it really helped me understand, like, how broad the issue is. It's not isolated to one um, you know, sector or one right. area of yeah. the, you know, it really can happen to anybody. Our next guests today on the Voices of Clay Count are two women who have been very instrumental in helping us to implement our projects through our school district. And it's my pleasure today to introduce Jacqueline Fitzmeyer and Lisa Last. Jacqueline, please tell everyone your job title and your role through the Clay Counts Coalition. Um, I'm the Director of Curriculum and Instruction for USD 379. I've been in the district 17 years, 9 years in that role. Um, directly I serve on the Clay Counts Board and really try to help with the curriculum piece and some of the student pieces that um, come into play from the coalition. Okay. And Lisa? I'm Lisa Last and I'm the um, school family and community connections counselor for the school district and I've been with the district for about two almost two years now in this role I was here two for two years several years ago as well um, and I kind of serve as um, the counselor representative on um, the clay count. Can you kind of tell about the process we went through in selecting the Botvin curriculum sure. and implementing that in our health classes across sure. the district? Um, the Botvin curriculum came to us through through the clay count organization and it has been utilized in our counseling services as well as our health um, classes. And so this last summer, we, um, with the help of Clay Counts, purchased enough student and teacher materials for six through 12. And we had different phases of teachers and buildings that uh, were going to get implemented. So we did some of them over the summer and we did some most recently here in March. And so the training was online. Um, some of the work had to be done on their own on their own time, but okay. others, um, I know Clay Council provided a very um, nice place for us to meet, uh, have lunch, and go ahead and go through the, the f final training and implementation. And what was nice about that is um, with Clay Council being involved, we could partner Clay Center and Wakefield together, share ideas, share strategies mm -hmm. and implementation. And um, we look to add uh, three more grade levels um, right. next year, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah, so um, I think that's going to be a great addition for um, for our community. So I am a facilitator for the Parent Project and Loving Solutions, which are our two um, parenting classes that we offer. We try to offer, we'd love to offer both of them um, twice a year, but currently we're only able to have facilitators to offer them each once a year. Parent Project is for um, parents of kids over age 11, and Loving Solutions is for parents of kids under age 11. And Megan Lewis, who is one of our community corrections um, officers. Mm -hmm. She facilitates with me. We are a kind of a team with that. And I believe we reached probably um, around 30 parents um, that took our classes over this last here, in not all from Clay Center, some from Manhattan area as well. But um, they've been really successful. I know that the parents have really appreciated the information that we're able to share um, with that. Yeah. Hey, Lisa, what are you seeing in regard to Kansas Communities That Care survey results? Yeah, um, things are looking a little better this year, I think, overall. Um, we still definitely are concerned about our kids um, with mental health um, challenges. That's kind of an ongoing um, challenge, I think, for everyone. We're seeing a little bit of improvement since um, 2020 when COVID, when we were homebound for a lot of things there, but still definitely concerns in our community um, for that. One thing that Clay Counts has provided to us is the signs of suicide training, um, which we do with, I think, two grade levels, three grade, let's see, one at the middle school and two here two at the, high, the school high school each year. Mm -hmm. And um, 
we have always, or for several years, provided suicide prevention training to our students, but um, Clay Counts has purchased that particular curriculum, which really helps us. Well, certainly we know that our grant is sunsetting in July, and we've been very, very grateful for the things that we've been able to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Think about what we've been able to do over the last four years. For sure. Yeah, you know, we've been definitely. able to communicate with the entire community to help them understand um, that it's, it's not okay to socially host, that it's not okay to buy alcohol and, mm -hmm. and tobacco for kids. Um, and w I think we've seen a lot of community trends shifting in that direction. Um, sure. You know, you talk about your community norms. Uh, we've been able to add curriculum here uh, at the schools. We've been able to provide uh, drug-free alternative activities for our kids and really work together to to have a united front. And, and I have really observed that and been very, very grateful for both of your contributions as we've worked on our sustainability because, you know, that's our next big challenge is that now we've been able to make all these really good things happen. How do we keep that momentum going? Mm -hmm. And you folks have been there as we've written the Drug Free Communities Grant. Um, certainly we've worked together to write the Drug Endangered Children Grant, uh, Suicide Prevention Grants. And so we're just, um, at this point trying to pool our creative thoughts and build on our past mm -hmm. successes so that we can continue to work together to make Clay County even better together. <laughs>